Hello and welcome to Workbooks End User Training. This is part of a series of short tutorials guiding you through the basics of using workbooks. In this tutorial we're going to focus on record types and relationships. Workbooks allows you to store and leverage important information about your prospects, your customers, partners and suppliers all in one database. Out of the box we provide approximately 30 different record types, which you can see here. Exactly what you've got will depend on which version of the product you're using. And if you need something that we don't provide, you can create custom objects or records. This series of tutorials focuses on three commonly used record types, which are people records for the people that you contact and do business with, the organizations employing those people, and also activities or tasks, things that you need to do in connection with pursuing business with those people and organizations. Remember though, in your day-to-day -day job, you'll probably use many more of the different record types that we provide. It's important to understand a little about how records join together. Here we're looking at an example of the types of data that might be stored on an organization record. The blue line on the left next to organization name shows that that field, that piece of data on that record is mandatory. Your system administrator might have made other fields mandatory as well, but that one, the organization name, is mandatory out of the box. On the screen now is a box showing some information about the kind of data you'd expect to find on a person record. Again, we can see there's a mandatory field, their person name is mandatory. But notice that the employer field, the second one down, isn't. If you work in a B2C industry, you don't really care who your customer works for. But in the B2B industry, it will be important. The employer field is what we call a linked field. You can see it's got a little asterisk next to it. And what this means is that if you do populate the field, it can only be populated with the name of an organization on your database. So it can be blank, but if it is populated, it has to be with the name of a record that already exists on your system. When we think about an opportunity record, it's a record that's used to capture information about prospective sales. So it includes information about who the prospective customer is, what stage of the sales process or the sales cycle that you've reached, when the deal is likely to close, if you know that, and the kinds of products and services that you're selling. The prospective customer field, like the employer field on a person record, is a linked field, which can be populated with an organization name if you sell into businesses, or it can be populated with a person name if you sell direct to individual people. Notice there are two fields on the opportunity record that are mandatory, the name of the opportunity and also the close date. Sometimes you don't know what the close date is when you first start negotiating with a prospective customer. So you just have to give it your best guess, but keep changing the close date in line with the information that you know about the deal. It's very important in the sales world to do that because if you don't, it makes pipeline reporting ineffective. The final record that I'm going to look at in this tutorial is an activity record. It can be a task such as a phone call or a to-do of some sort, or it can be a meeting. So either way, it's going to include information on the type of activity, the due date, the completed date and so on, the status, how far th through that have you got, is it brand new, is it in progress, is it complete, and also the name of the person, the primary contact that you're dealing with. Again, the primary contact field is what we call a linked field, and it can only be populated with the name of a person who's already on your database. Remember, you'll probably be using lots more than these four record types, and there are many more fields on those record types than the ones shown here. So do take some time to have a look at what's stored on your database and familiarize yourself with which records hold that data, because it'll make your day job much easier when you know where to find that information. Thank you for watching this tutorial, which I hope you found useful. For more information, remember to visit our knowledge base, which you can find at www.workbooks.com slash knowledge underscore base. Thanks. Bye bye.